All right, welcome back to Chaos to Clarity. Tropical Storm Aaron will be the first hurricane of the season, and this is going to become a huge hurricane, I think, as we head into the weekend as it uh, moves to the north and northeast of the Lesser Antilles here. All right, I want to get right to the radar satellite here, and you can see it. There it is. That's Aaron. And I'll tell you what, it's not in the best location for development. It's still developing here. Water temperatures are a little lower here. I think they're in the middle to upper 70s. They're not over 80, certainly. And there is some dry air and there is some wind shear, but it is still a tropical storm right now. It got upgraded at 11 o'clock this morning. I want to show you, you know, when you're looking at these kind of storms, right, what's going to stop it from developing? Now, water's not all that warm. Talked about that, but it's usually dry air and wind shear. Let me show you the dry air. You'll note, though, as I put this into motion, that you have a lot of dry air, no doubt about it. Let me put this full screen so you can see it a little better. So here's Aaron right here. You do have dry air in its path, but you'll notice the dry air is not coming into the center of the circulation. In fact, it's being pushed away. Boy, I've seen this a lot. That tells me that Aaron is creating its own environment for which to thrive. So I don't think dry air is going to be a problem with this. Yes, there's a lot of it in its pathway, but I think you're already seeing that it's creating its own environment, the dryer is being pushed away, that shouldn't stop it. What about wind shear? Well, let's take a look at that. Now, dark purple is wind shear, light purple is less wind shear. Where Aaron is right now, it's in a pretty good spot, favorable for development. Now, it is going to be getting into this area Tuesday night into Wednesday, or, you know, into during the day Wednesday, but while there is some moderate to stronger shear here, the shear is going to be coming in out of the east. I'll show you that here in a second. And that's almost as if, if you're taking a walk, for example, uh, in the evening or on the beach. And if you're walking with the wind, with the wind at your back, it's a lot easier than if the, the wind's hitting you in the face, right? Same story here. The wind's at the back of the storm, moving with it. So while there is some wind shear, I don't think it's going to be all that detrimental to it. But I'll tell you what, and I'll show you this again. Look what's going on here. North and east of the islands in here. This is where the storm is going to be as we head into the latter half of this week in the upcoming weekend here. No wind shear, zero wind shear, light winds. I'll show you at a 200 millibar high in the atmosphere, you're going to have an upper high in here. This system will likely be a hurricane on Thursday, and then I think it really gets going Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have Category 3. I can easily see Cat 4 with this. Easily see this going to a Cat 4 because I'm telling you, the water temperatures here are super duper warm. They're in the middle to upper 80s with low wind shear, and I don't think the dry air is coming in. I see no reason, no way this is going to get stopped from becoming a major hurricane. Unless the dry air comes in, I don't see that happening though. Let me show you some models and I can illustrate what I'm talking about here. Um, let me put this up here. I'm going to go full screen so you can see it here. Let me go to this graphic here. Let's put this full screen. I got to turn off my pen. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the European location. Let me put this on full so you can see it a little better here. So here we go. Now, this is Wednesday. Here is Aaron right here right here this is wednesday all right what does the wind shear look like at 200 millibar there's a little wind shear coming in out of the east just a little bit here's aaron right in here notice in this area there's a little bit of wind shear coming in out of the east just a little bit let me put this up here and we'll try this again so you can see it so there's aaron there's wednesday there's not much wind shear on this product and look at 200 millibars, little bit of wind shear coming in out of the east. Now, let me go forward to Thursday afternoon. There's Aaron in here. Let me go back up to here. There's Aaron right there. You can see it. We'll mark it. This is it. There's the islands. What does it look at 200 millibar? We look like looking at that as one well as our wind shear product. Oh, I mean, my goodness. Look at this. Let me put it up top here. You've got, at 200 millibar, an upper level high right over the storm. That's Thursday. This is when it really goes to town. It starts Thursday. 
And then as you follow this, there it goes. It's right over that 200 millibar high on Friday. There's Saturday morning on the periphery of the 200 millibar high, but still very low wind shear in this area. I don't see much. Look at it Saturday. There it is north of the islands. Look at the wind shear. Virtually none right over this storm Saturday evening, right in here. That's why I think this is going to go to a major. I have no question. The question is, really the question becomes, does this as a cat 3 or cat 4? Cat 4 is, I think, 131. I can see it. So this is going to be a, this is going to be a big hurricane northeast of the Lesser Antilles by the time we get in the weekend. In fact, let, let me show you our iPad. There it is. Here's our iPad. There, uh, here it is. Now, that's why the hurricane is by Thursday, right? And then it goes to town in here. Let me play this again so it doesn't... I, I mix something up here really quick. Let me play it again. I moved it. I didn't want to move it. So there it is. Okay. So there it is. Thursday. And then I, I could see this. I could see this being a three and I could see this being a four in here Saturday and the Sunday north of the islands. This is going to cause a lot of problems, by the way, with rough surf, rip currents, damaging storm surge, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and especially the Leeward Islands. Now, every time when you are tracking a hurricane, there's always forks in the road. The fourth fork in the road is going to be Sunday, Monday, and here's why. You'll notice the movement, a steady west-northwest track, but right in here, there's a turn to the north. The question you should ask yourself is why? Why is this going to be turning to the north? Does that make sense? Well, let's take a look at some of the modeling here. Let me go to my, uh, I have a different model. I want to take a look at the air, uh, air uh, flow here. All right, so here we go. Let me put this on full. So what's happening is as we get into Sunday and Monday, here we go. What the modeling is suggesting is that this is Aaron in here, and it's this trough that's pulling this northward. It, it, it's interesting. This is the American model. It also has this little weak upper low pulling it northward. I'm just not sure about that. Here's the European, by the way. European doesn't have that. GFS, European. See how the GFS has that little area here, right in here, right? The, the European doesn't. Now, it has this weak trough. It has that weak trough pulling it northward. You could see the European does pull it northward a little bit here. There's the GFS. Here's the European. GFS, European. See how the GFS is a lot farther north with this Monday morning. American, European. By the way, here's the Canadian. A lot farther south. The question is this trough coming across the northeast, does this pick it up and pull this northward, or is it so weak it continues to move on the west-northwest track? And it's not, it's moving more west than north. And if that's the case, the farther this south, it, the farther this south this is, Monday, Tuesday, the greater probability that this can make a close call or direct impact on the United States. That would be Wednesday and Thursday. That's my question. How strong is this trough? Here's the, G here's, the, here's the Canadian here, and then look at the GFS, the American model, same time. It's a little deeper, but it's got this little weird piece hanging in here, pulling this northward. You could see the movement of this. Here's the European model. The GFS, see how it pulls it north? See how it pulls it north? Look at the European. Pulls it north, but not as much. Not as much. And look at the difference. GFS, European. GFS, European. This is Tuesday afternoon. GFS, European. Here's the Canadian, even farther south and west. So that's the first fork in the road. Not sure that's right. My concern is, is that this trough isn't deep enough to pull it northward. It leaves it behind a little bit, and then you have a west-northwest. Instead of it going north-northwest, it's more west-northwest. And you'll notice when you look at the window, we're trying to cover for that here. See, here's the position, but we could see it even over here or over here. We're not sure yet. 
So the first fork in the window is right in here. That'll be Monday night into Tuesday. Is it moving like this or this? I'm not sure. The next fork in the window is going to be Tuesday. And it all depends upon this trough coming into the, into the Midwest here. It's this trough here. Right in here. Let me turn this off. This is, it's this trough coming into the Midwest. Does it pick it? Or does it pull it more toward? Look at the Canadian. The Canadian's very dangerous here because it, it's farther south and then you've got this trough coming in here. But you see how far west the trough is back here in the Midwest and the Canadian? That would draw it more toward the North Carolina coast. The GFS says no, the trough's dropped into it and then it's just out. The European, it drops the trough into it, but it's not as far east GFS, European, Canadian. Canadian and European are close enough to make me a little nervous. I don't like the Canadian because it has the trough back here, and that would try to bring it in. The European suggests, no, the trough is going to pick it up and move it out to sea. So that's the questions we're trying to answer right now. How close can this come to the United States? I will say this. I don't like to rule out anybody. But let, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the East Coast here really quickly. I'm just going to load a map for you here, the United States. I'm not even going to put anything on it. I'll put the, I'll put the surface map on it. But I want to sh show the United States map here really quick. And I want to draw on it a little bit here. So here's, the, here's what I think. I think from, and it's er too early to rule out anybody. But I want to give you an idea of what I'm thinking here. Let me put this on full. I think from Myrtle Beach on toward Florida, the Florida Peninsula, and of course the Gulf is out. This is not a Gulf system. This is an Atlantic system. I think it's very unlikely, very unlikely that you're going to get a direct impact or a close call. Myrtle Beach on south toward the Florida Peninsula. We're not going to take you out of it. Now, I'm not going to say no way, but I think it's very unlikely. However, if you're going to get a direct impact, or hopefully not a landfall, but if it would happen, I think this is the area to watch in the United States. In here, let me clear this. This would be the area I would be concerned. In here. That if you get a direct impact or a close call, it would be from North Carolina to Maine. And in particular, within this area, there are three main areas to watch. Outer Banks, the Cape and the Islands, Eastern Maine, and Nova Scotia. Those are the areas that I'm worried most about Aaron having the most impacts right now. I think it would be very unlikely that you would get an impact from Myrtle Beach on south to the Florida Peninsula at this point. Now, there's going to be rough surf up and down the eastern seaboard. There's no doubt about that. I mean, that's, that's going to happen all next week. But I think we really have to worry most from North Carolina to Maine, and in particular, the areas that jut off to the east, eastern North Carolina, uh, the Outer Banks, southeast uh, New England, the Cape, the Islands, down east Maine, Nova Scotia. So let's say four. That's why I would worry the most. I'm telling you, the end game is far away. We're talking about the middle part of next week. But let's concentrate on that time frame. Sunday, Monday. Does it pull northward or does it does it stay more on a west northwest track? And then let's concentrate on that trough. In fact, I can show it to you here on the CMC here. You know, let's concentrate on that trough coming in the Midwest Monday, Tuesday. Does it pick it or pull it toward the United States? Pick it up and pull it out to sea or pull it in the United States? I'm not sure yet. I'm really not. Now, the preponderance of model guidance suggests that this is out to sea between Bermuda and the United States. I'm not ready to say that definite for now. These Atlantic systems are very difficult, but let's concentrate on those two time frames: Sunday and the Monday, 
and then Tuesday and Wednesday, Sunday and Monday, does the first trough coming up in the northeast move it northward, or does it leave it behind and it keeps going west northwest? And then you wait for the second trough, and then it gets a little hairy because then that trough, if it's too slow and too far west, that could pull it right in toward North Carolina. So that's what we're going to worry about. If you have any questions, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Accurano. We're gonna we're gonna follow this every day and give you updates via X, and I'll be updating this probably on Wednesday.